Hey, this is Nate Cooper from Member Plus. You're listening to the Inspiration Place podcast with Miriam Schultz. It's the Inspiration Place podcast with artist Miriam Shulman. Welcome to the Inspiration Place podcast, an art world insider podcast for artists by an artist, where each week we go behind the scenes to uncover the perspiration and inspiration behind the art. And now, your host, Miriam Shulman. Well, hello, this is your host, artist Miriam Shulman, and you're listening to episode number 23 of the Inspiration Place podcast. I'm thrilled that you're here today. Today, I've invited a guest expert in building websites because I've heard from so many of you that you either want to know how to get started or you have a website that really needs a redo and you're not sure what direction to go. So in this episode, we're going to cover the differences between Squarespace, Shopify, and why you might want to build your own. But before we get there, I wanted to tell you about today's freebie. I'm always getting asked what software and tools I use to be more productive in my art business. So to help you out, I have put together a list of everything that I use. And if I have any discounts available for you, listeners... I've added those as well. So to get your hands on that PDF, just go to shulmanart.com forward slash tools. All right, now back to our show. Today's guest is a writer and consultant from New York City. He's worked in the retail marketing department of Apple, and he has a best-selling graphic novel, Build Your Own Website, a comic guide to HTML, CSS, and WordPress. He's the host of the podcast, Cut Your Learning Curve, and currently helps entrepreneurs, and by the way, us artists are entrepreneurs too, (laughs) create recurring monthly revenue through his membership platform, which is memberplus.co. Please welcome to the show, Nate Cooper. Hey, Nate. Thanks so much for joining me today. Thanks for having me, Miriam. All right, Nate. So like I was saying before, the reason I invited you is because I asked my Facebook group what they wanted to learn about, and so many of them said websites. Hmm. So by the way, if you want to join my that free group, all you have to do is go to shulmanart.com forward slash group, because I'm always listening to what questions are being asked in there. So anyway, Nate, thank you so much for joining me, because this is an important topic, and you are my go-to person whenever I have a question about my website. Yes, I, I, I am a go-to person for a lot of people. Yeah, this is my comic book, by the way. I know you have bought a copy at some point, right? I, I do, and my <laughs> assistant read it, and she took it home with her. Yeah, and it's funny because uh, I'm working with a lot of business coaches these days, but I, when I was starting out, was focused on the creative professional. So um, artists, uh, photographers, people who need to put their work online, that, that's been a big area for me. I know a lot of people in that arena need a web presence or, or at least crave one, and I try to help out. And don't you teach a course at 92nd Street Y to, um, is it for artists specifically or what is that, what is that course about? Yeah, it's a WordPress course that's every, everybody gets a copy of the book and uh, it's just like a one day overview of WordPress at the art center there. So there's a lot of people who, yeah, are kind of, again, artists and creative professionals. The other classes there are like pottery and painting and things like that. So it's a really great environment to kind of get my hands dirty with <laughs> working with artists. And I've also taught like School of Visual Art here in Manhattan and uh, FIT as well. So it's definitely a big area of interest for sure. Lots more about it. (laughs) Well, you definitely need a website. I mean, this is 2018. And I was telling my mother the other day, though, like when I first got started about 15 years ago, Mm -hmm. uh, when I first put together my website, that was a big deal. Ooh, I have a website. Now, like having a website is kind of like being in the yellow pages. (laughs) You know, everyone's, everyone has a website, but you, Mm -hmm. but you do need one and you do need a good one. So let's get started talking about some of the most common ones that artists might be looking at Mm -hmm. in addition to just building their own. So the ones that I hear the most are Squarespace and Shopify. What do you see are the differences between that? And maybe um, we can also dig into what the problems might be with going that route. Yeah. So I'm going to try my best not to make this boring. As you know, I wrote a comic book. So I'm very much about making... I will interrupt you if you get boring. (laughs) Okay, good. That's my job. (laughs) Perfect. (laughs) And uh, yes, so basically the 
the main thing between Squarespace and Shopify, is Shopify is an e-commerce platform. So that would be, you know, basically the deciding factor if you were kind of going one direction or the other. If you want a, a website, uh, they both can build websites. Um, no, we're still talking about Squarespace and Shopify, right? Correct. Mm-hmm. So wait, why wouldn't Squarespace be an e-commerce platform? Um, I think it has e-commerce functionality. It's just that Shopify is built for e-commerce. So it started right. out as an e-commerce and then okay. people build websites on top of it, but its primary function is as an e-commerce platform. Got um, it. Whereas Squarespace is, most often I see Squarespace used by artists with when they're doing portfolio. They're not really selling things directly. So e-commerce right. is one of those technical terms. So basically it means you're collecting money through the website. As you said, a lot of people just use a website mainly for marketing purposes, just so people yeah. know what your work looks like. They know how to get in touch with you. You know, you might have a contact form. That something like that, you don't really need to have a full e-commerce website because e-commerce it adds another layer of complexity. You know, but somebody who's selling their work, you know, via the internet or through mail, you know, places where they're actually selling digital products or selling products that they're shipping out then you would want to look at an e-commerce platform. That's what Shopify really is built for. But yes, they both are... The thing about both of them is that they are private companies. And the web is built on open source technology, meaning anybody can get access to the code and look on Okay, now you're getting boring. Okay. <laughs> the main reason that's useful for somebody who's non-technical is that the more somebody can get access to the code, it doesn't have to be you. It just means that the more flexibility you have. Okay. So the, 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 you might not be the person that's getting under the hood, but if you want to hire somebody to get under the hood, do more things for you, you might need to hire a developer, somebody who knows how to read code, as I'm sure you've picked up here and there, HTML, CSS, people know little bits here and there. You know, and the idea is that when you are using either Shopify or Squarespace, both of which are very good products, the companies themselves kind of tell you what you can and can't do. Mm. And that, that's good for a lot of people because if you are non-technical and if you're not planning on hiring a developer, you want to be able to go somewhere and not spend a lot of money and, and spend time building it yourself. And if that's your plan, both of those platforms allow you to kind of just plop a website together, never look at code. It looks great because it is sort of modern and it uses really nice templates and you never really have to get under the hood or customize it or anything. You just have to kind of like learn their tool set and that sort of thing. You know, it's really built for, in those cases, for somebody to kind of DIY it. So, you know, I've definitely talked to a lot of people who have more like graphic design background who like those platforms because they don't want to code, but they do, you know, want to kind of go in and change the font or the color, or, you know, kind of tweak the space, and, you know, that sort of thing. And they can do a lot of that stuff with, with both of those platforms. They're really designed uh-huh. for that. One sense. thing that I looked into, and I think it's definitely true, is that Squarespace is better if you plan on blogging. And Shopify, when I tried using their blog, it was horrible. <laughs> I mean, really could not use their blog. I had to. Yeah, and I've heard nightmares about Squarespace too compared to WordPress. WordPress started out as a blogging platform. So its core strength is blogging, Yes. Um, whereas Squarespace and Shopify, as you said, they, they have the option to do it. You could build a website on, Squarespace, on Shopify, like I said, but it's not necessarily going to let you do everything you want it to do because you're sort of limited to what the framework they lay out for you is. And so, yeah, so if, it, if you want to do a certain thing and the company you know, that runs Shopify doesn't have that feature built in, you might be kind of stuck. Um, you might hit a wall with some of the functionality and, and it wasn't built for blogging initially. It was built for e-commerce. And so you run into things like that where you have to have some trade-offs. The, the right. upside is that you can do it yourself. <laughs> the downside is that if, if you want it a certain way, you might not be able to do it. Okay. And then you can go the other route where let's say you're already blogging on a WordPress site, you can add e-commerce into that either what's it, WooCommerce or some other, there's other plugins besides WooCommerce, isn't there? Yeah, WooCommerce is probably the most popular one. I was just actually looking up statistics on this and it's it's like one something million as compared to, like it, it really dwarfs Shopify and Magento, like as the two other kind of big shopping um, e-commerce sites. The downside is because it's a plugin to WordPress is that the support isn't quite the same as Shopify because it's like an ecosystem. Not It's not just one company that maintains that. And that's kind of the trade-off you get when you go into WordPress land <laughs> is that 
there's no limits. You could do whatever you want. You can customize it to your heart's content. You can find people like me or, you know, developers online who will build you something. But that means that you might have to contend with the fact that one person built the e-commerce thing you're, you're working on and yeah. another person built the Facebook thing you're working on. And, you know, ideally they work well together and in most cases they do, but there may be an issue where they don't quite fit or you might take some work to get it to, to play nicely, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, and so there's just a more bigger learning curve. It's not something that is easy to jump into if you're kind of starting from scratch. But I will say that WordPress.com, they make this a little bit confusing, but that is something that is a little bit easier to use because it doesn't quite have the variety of plugins available, even though it does have an e-commerce option. Okay. Um, that's what we use when we do the 92nd Street Y class because anybody can go there, they can sign up. And it's kind of meant to be a, an easier learning curve. And then they don't give you all of the plugins that you would be able to do if you were hosting it, like the way you host WordPress. Right. Let me just interview myself for a minute, yeah. because I know there's questions that people out there are probably wondering. So when I started off with my website, it was not a WordPress. I don't even know. They probably had it yeah. when I started, but it was definitely not an obvious choice. So I wanted a blog, and so I created a blog on Blogger, and I wanted a website, so I created a website on this site called CityMax, which I don't even know if they're still in business. I think they are. Okay. They, they were still in business when I, when I got rid of it. Mm -hmm. So, um, but what happens, and this is what happens to all of us, and is that your website or your blog or whatever it is, or if it's all one thing, even if you're using WordPress, it gets stale looking if you don't change it. And my blog and my website started to look like the 1990s <laughs> or maybe the 80s. I don't know. Do we have, we didn't, when did we have the web? No. It was like, okay. And not mid 90s. Yeah. My first job was in 97 doing websites. So that was. That's right. Okay. Well, it definitely, <laughs> it definitely looked like, looked like that. Well, I think I started my website in like the year 2000. Yeah. And so WordPress yeah. might have not been around then. I, I started using WordPress in 2002 and that was like version two, I think. Yeah. I, thought, I mean, I remember that the options were TypePad. Right. And Blogger, <laughs> which is free. So I yeah. think free. And Blogger was great. Too. <laughs> yeah, I, like... I, you know, we, we've talked about that too, is like, you know, that Blogger used to be really great and it, it was so uh, far ahead. And I think what happened is they just kind of let it kind of, sit there on the vine and and they haven't updated it. So it's like, there's all these great sites that are a blogger, but, but almost all of them look like they're about 10 years old at this point because yeah. it's not actively being developed. And that's the thing to think about, you know, when you're choosing any of these platforms is like, you know, how active is the community? How easy is it to get help? You know, things like that. That's always a big factor. I kind of mention in classes and things is that, you know, you want to think about like, well, if you spend X amount of dollars right now, what is it going to look like in five years? Because, you know, mm -hmm. five years on the web is like ancient history, you know, like that's it's like dog of, years. Yeah, it's wild. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And, you know, all of these systems that you've mentioned, they, they all have some sort of theming or template system. And so the idea is like, once you go onto the platform, like WordPress is great about this, build all of your content, your blog posts and your pages and e-commerce, whatever. If you want to redesign it, you just install a new theme. Now, that sometimes can take a lot of work. I don't want to underplay it because, uh, you know, sometimes if you get like a drastic redesign, it changes a lot of things. But the important part is your stuff stays intact. And that's true of Squarespace as well and Shopify as well. I mean, the idea is like if you choose an option that sort of has a templating system, it really means that you can keep a lot of your kind of core content in place but then update the design and other listeners might've heard of like mobile responsive is really important these days. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to make sure that people who are looking at your site on an iPad or, you know, an Android phone that they have a good experience. You know, if they're zooming in and they can't read everything, then that's a, that's a poor experience. People are going to probably not stick around. Then they're back to Instagram. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, you know, that's something that didn't really exist 10 years ago. And now, no. <laughs> so I did get rid of my blogger. I mean, Nate knows the whole story because he's been helping me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I did get rid of it. And I do have my blog is a WordPress blog. So that's showmanart.com. And what happened it was just like the kind of thing like if I hear one more plugin or one more thing that I could do with WordPress that I can't do 
on my side, I was going to lose it. So I finally lost it. I said, I'm, that's it. I'm done. And the, Nate knows I have these technology tantrums often. The same thing happened to me this year with Yahoo and Gmail. I was like, I had it. <laughs> I wanted I wanted all the features that Gmail could do. So I do have a WordPress site. And my e-commerce, though, I did keep it on Shopify because I didn't want to go down that rabbit hole. And as many of you listeners, some of you listeners might know, not all of you know, I actually used to be a computer programmer. Did you know that, Nate? Yeah, I knew you had you knew that, right? Email, okay. Something. So for me, it's actually more dangerous to get involved with the programming side because I could probably spend hours changing the size of a widget or right. <laughs> people don't even know what a widget is anymore. But yeah, I didn't I didn't want I didn't think that was a good use of my time in the way I run my business. So Well that's wanna... always uh that's always a factor too with choosing a platform or deciding, you know, whether you're gonna do a redesign or whatever. I mean, as you know, because you went through this process, but Knowing what you're willing to invest both time and money is like, it, it's always the factor. You know, I'm never, I don't, I don't build Squarespace sites, for example. I think it's a great platform though. Um, and it really benefits people who do want to do it themselves, you know, and yeah. if, if you have the time and energy to kind of focus on, you know, sitting there and tweaking it and that's important to you, then you should definitely do that. And you can also do that with WordPress, but the learning curve is a little bit steeper. Um, you know, versus, you know, like I know you have people that work with you that can post blog posts for you, things like that. And it's a factor to think about like, okay, well, how do we sort of lay out our time and our budget and like decide on something that fits into our workflow? I think that that's really the thing. It's not about the technology. It's about how much time you have and about how it fits into your existing workflow. You know what Absol- I mean? Absolutely. Absolutely. And now I'm going to mute myself while I yell at my husband not to interrupt us. So, <laughs> okay. I just told him to stop making sweet talk to the cat. So <laughs> I didn't hear any of it. I don't know. No, no, I muted. I muted okay. it. <laughs> I, you were talking and I, I muted you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fine. No, and then when I yelled at him, I muted me. Yeah. Right. No, I could tell that part. I just, I couldn't hear the cat beforehand. So. No, no, no. That's because <laughs> I, I muted him. Okay. Uh, I actually keep the, the studio door open because of the cat. Because if I close it, then the cat will start scratching on the door, crying to come in. So Nate, why would an artist choose to build their own site? Or would they choose that? Like, what, well, do, you, what do you do with the, the artists who are in your 92nd Street Y class? Well, we, we actually build a site on WordPress um, in the class. I mean, it's, it is oh, wow. like if you have somebody kind of walking you through, you can get it, you can get through it in a, in a pretty quick amount of time. It's just about, it's about whether you have that help and guidance or whether you, you know, have to, how do you get to that point? You know, I mean, I, people like I know have bought my book and like use that to build a website. Uh, my, my favorite story about that is like a friend of mine who's a lawyer and I've known her for years. She is like one of the, the kindest people, very smart, but she is not <laughs> tech savvy and she needed a law website. And she's like, I know I need WordPress. Can we just spend like an hour? I'll, I'll make you tea and we'll sit down and do it. And it was literally just an hour. She just hired me for an hour. And a week later, she's like, hey, Nate, can you check out my website? And I was just so blown away. And I would like show it off in classes. I was like, this is what my friend did. That's so cool. <laughs> it was really great. And I think the thing is, is that if you haven't tried yet, it can be really intimidating. Like as yeah. you, you know what I mean? It's like if you start Googling, like getting started with WordPress or like, how do I find, you know, what's a plugin, what's a widget or whatever. And you're just like, wait a minute, my mind is boggled. You could fall down a rabbit hole and spend hours on that and go, what the heck am I talking about? And it's, it could be really intimidating, even though it's, it's meant to be easy. Even though those like sites like Shopify, if you want to customize something outside of the theme, you have to know where to go inside of their code. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, it's ugly. (laughs) <laughs> so yeah. then there's always the choice. Do you want to pay somebody? Is it worth your time? Do you want to learn it? I always find it's good to have like a little basic knowledge. It's kind of like how when we were in school, we learned algebra and trig, even though we don't use it now. Like, you yeah. know, I feel like it's the same sort of thing. You do want to have a little bit of knowledge. It's helpful to know then um, if you if you do hire somebody. Like I always feel good when the clients I work with are are empowered to, to kind of understand at least like, this is what we're going to do. And this is yeah. what you're signing up for. <laughs> Cause it's like, you know, it, it's really easy if you don't know a little bit to kind of just go, okay, well, whatever. And 
put your hands up in the air and then somebody can kind of like, you know, say, okay, well, I'll just do it for you. And then they just charge up hour, 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 you know, whatever. Right. Meanwhile, then, it was the theme the whole time. They just yeah. installed a theme. <laughs> it really keeps, like, <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. It's like, uh, so I think, yeah, you're right. I, I would definitely recommend knowing a little bit about it. And that's, you know, one of the things I do with like, if we do like a website build, I always incorporate like, you know, at least an hour where I work with the client to just kind of show them, here's where you go to do this. Here's where you go to do that. Cause I don't want to, be, honestly, I don't want to be that person. Like the whole point of me doing that for them is so that they can do it. Cause as you know, like now, once you know how to do it, it goes really quick, right? Like it's yeah. like, it just takes that initial time to learn it, but now you know how to do it and you can go and post a blog on your own and upload a photo and do all that stuff. Yeah. Well, actually I know nothing. My assistant <laughs> does it all. <laughs> <laughs> that's, not true. Yeah. that's not true sometimes she's not like last week she had jury duty and I was like mm-hmm. oh my god you mean I have to get my blog post ready <laughs> how do you do this again <laughs> so, it's not it's not that bad it really yeah. isn't it was fine but I, I think the other thing we have to talk about though is so building the website it's kind of like if, if you want to build a house you have the construction person so mm-hmm. building it is like the construction person but you also have to design it, like the yeah. architect, you know, what is it going to look like? Mm-hmm. And then also what words go on the page. So what do you think should happen first when someone's designing a website? Should they go to a designer first? Should they start with the construction? What's your thoughts on that? Well, that's a tough one because I think it all depends on budget. <laughs> um, mm. In my experience, design, like custom design is one of the biggest, uh, the highest costs, like mm. if you're doing that, you know, because you know, a good copywriter can cost a lot of money, a good developer, you know, but like, I think when I, when we do something that's like custom design included, that like just blows the budget way up. All right. So, let's talk numbers. How much yeah. do each of these things in your experience cost? I mean, a custom built like design, you know, WordPress site with copy and everything. I mean, we're talking like easily could go into the 20 K 10 K, but it's, um, you know, and flip side is like, could be like, 2k you know what I mean it just depends on right. the biggest thing uh is uh I think like are you coming with something that is pre-designed you know so like right. you mentioned the idea that you can choose a template so you if you choose a template and you're like okay we just want to make this font bigger or we just want to change the font to this or we just want to yeah. change that background color that's a small tweak that's not something you need to go to a hire a designer have them go into photoshop do a mock-up and, and this is not to like downplay you know designers are I've worked with a lot of designers they're great they do a really good job, but there's there's a whole process to what they do, which is like, you know, doing a custom layout and everything adds more time to it as well. So uh, And then there's the branding experts, which is Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, like a logo, per- right? And power. Well, what color represents yeah. your brand and what mm-hmm. font represents your brand and Yeah. Yeah, I mean that kind I'm of thing. I'm just jealous of people who can do that. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's when the budget, yeah, I mean that's yeah. when it really goes up. You know, and I think like in some cases, like, you know, like if you can do your own copy, for example, that's where your skills are. Whatever starting point you have, it can kind of scale up or down from there. So I think it's like, it's it's also true that you could probably get a website built for a couple hundred bucks if, if you find somebody who's kind of like, newer or you know depending on the region also i think like people in the new york cost of living is a little bit higher so the costs higher here versus hiring mm. outside of uh outside of the bigger cities for example but um you know like for example if you're going to start with a theme let's say and you're just customizing a theme and you already have the copy written and stuff for example that's something that i do a lot you know what i mean so it's like somebody's like i have this theme i, I want to use that theme i have all the content <laughs> That's an ideal world (laughs) because usually they think they have all the content, but they don't. But if you Mm. like, I think that's the biggest thing I would say, like in preparation for it is like, get everything together into one place. (laughs) And then you can kind of like go to a designer and say, Hey, what would this cost? Like, you know, like, you know, you need an about page and something to sell. Right. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. And and you need all your content digitized. That's a big one for artists. It's like, do you have, you know, how organized is it depending on the, the work you have? Like, do you have a sort of a digital storage archive? Like I I took this before Leo class at at SVA for a while. And that, that was just way more time than most people realize. Like people who do painting, you know, for example, or installations or sculpture, you know, it's like 
they don't have their photos organized. And, yeah. and so just <laughs> the amount well, of Well, that, that's what happened like around 10 years ago. People used to come to me and say, will you help me build a website? Of course, I would charge them. But it's like, yeah, of course. But do you have photos of your art? Right. Like who's going to photograph? And they thought I was going to do that. It's like, yeah. no, grandma. It's <laughs> not going to happen. I'm not doing that all for you. So yeah, yeah. It, you know, it's everything. It's photographing, it, the copy, the design. All right. So, Nate, one of your specialties is putting together membership sites. And actually, we should probably link in the show notes to Stephanie's Shine Coaching. What's the name of her website? Well, we'll make sure Stephanie Hines, it should be live by the time this airs in January. So Mm -hmm. I'll let her know that has to be ready by then. Okay. Okay. So we'll put a, we'll put a link to hers that, that Mm -hmm. Nate helped design as well as Juliana. I'm going to totally screw up her, say her last name. Marulanda. Yes. (laughs) Hers is beautiful by the way. And it, it helps people get organized, doesn't it? It's like productivity and... Yeah, well, that's what, and and I can't take credit for the design in that, but she had a designer who did all of the assets, but um, where we really worked well together, and I think what really helped form that product, same thing with Stephanie too, is like kind of putting together all of the information into something that's user-friendly. So like, you know, even though like the design assets, I didn't do how it's organized and how it's laid out and like the logic of like, how does somebody actually use the site? Because- yeah. um, like when you said, like, you're going to have to have an about page. That's not always intuitive for people. Like, you'd be surprised how many people, like, I, I, I you know, people hear about sitemaps. If you haven't heard about a sitemap, it's just sort of like an outline of what your website's going to look like. And they'll come to me and they say, I have a sitemap. I was like, okay, great. Okay, well, where's the content for all those pages? I said, well, I don't have that content. And it's like, you know, <laughs> it's one thing to think about what you're going to have. It's another thing to actually put it all in together because it's, it's uh, you do have to have all of that stuff ready to go. And then you have to think about how does it come together? So you have the assets, you have the content, right? put it into a format that like, it makes sense to people, <laughs> you know? Again, and then- it's like with using the architect analogy and they do actually, that is a, a term that they use like a website architect, but you know, it's like, you know that your house needs a bathroom and a kitchen, but is it when you, as soon as you walk in the door, you're walking into the kitchen? Yeah. <laughs> you know, so uh, you need like the little hallway, which is like your landing page, your, your, your home page. And then maybe you have the living rooms off to one side and the kitchen's off to the other. So all these things. So there's a nice flow to your home. It's the same thing with your website. All right, so we'll make sure we, we link to examples of that, Nate. Why would an artist want to work with you to build a membership site? That's a good question. So, um, And you're glad I asked it, right? (laughs) (laughs) Thank you for that question. Um, So the the membership site is basically, I think, a good service offering that fits into something that you might already be doing. So let's say you already are selling something online or you kind of already have clients that you work with. Maybe you've even done an online course or something like that. The idea of a membership site it just has a few different components. It's basically, it's a, it's a website, but it has content that's sort of locked out from the public and that people have to log in to gain access to. And for them to be able to log in, they are going to have to be paying for access to it, basically. And one of the things, the reasons I kind of mentioned it's a good sort of fits into an existing product offering is because it's a nice way to kind of lay in reoccurring revenue. Because a lot of times what people do with membership sites is they set a monthly price so instead of thinking about, okay, we're going to have this course and it's this much money and this course is that much money, you can set a monthly price, you get access to all the courses or you have exclusive content. So I think it, it just gives you another sort of revenue stream yes. that is different than the other ways that you're sort of monetizing your business. And let me give you the creative translation of that. Yeah, so, please. Okay. So things that people who might be listening, if you're a photographer, you might want to offer a stock photography membership site where every month your members get new images that they can use on their Instagram. That is a common actually model that photographers are using now that every month you get different photos. You could be teaching art classes like I do where every month they get lessons. I, I know artists who have put together physical kits, box subscriptions, but as far as the website component, it could be that maybe you teach them how to use that kit each month. So those are different ideas that 
people who are in the art space might be looking for could be a photography site, different ways to make your photos more beautiful, how to make family photos, things like that. So those are all examples that people who are artists or photographers might use. And I think what you're mentioning is really the key, the key component from managing it is that you're adding value consistently. Yes. So you're getting, the thing is, is rather than like a one-off client interaction or a commission or something where it's just like you, they pay and then you work on the project and you're done. It's like they're paying kind of ongoing and in exchange you come up with new things, keep them coming back because that's kind of the secret sauce of it is that you really have to put more lessons in there, or put yes. more photos in there, right? Otherwise it's like, why are they paying you a monthly fee, right? Right. <laughs> Although I, I'm starting to find myself paying monthly fees for things more and more like Apple Music. Right. Just, well, I'm sure there's artists that are, they keep adding to you. Just don't <laughs> you just don't know about them or something? Yeah, Netflix is that way too. You know. Yep. <laughs> but yes. yeah, I think that's the flip side. Like a g- gym model is a, is like that's an example of a membership model where people sign up and then maybe they don't always use it, but they feel like I, I think one of the reasons people like doing it is because I think this is really great for artists because I know that I'm on like a Patreon for some some artists that I know, and it feels like if if you have an audience like people who want to support you it's kind of like a good feeling of belonging. Like you're part of that group, you're part of that community and you want to, you know, you want to be supportive of that group or community. And so even though it is important to keep them engaged and give value, it just gives them a way to, you know, kind of support and keep it, keep the machine running. Keep Absolutely. So in my membership site, which is the Inspired Insiders Club, my members, they get a video actually every week, Mm -hmm. but a maximum of four per month. So if there's five, weeks. They only get four. And then they have a private Facebook group and they get weekly challenges. And then also inside my membership site, they can ask questions. And so they're inspired because they get to see also what I'm working on and why I'm making the choices I do. And I really let them inside my creative process. So if I get a commission that goes into the insiders club. Mm -hmm. So that's how, that's how I built a membership. So Nate, if people want to work with you, how do they do that? Oh, so memberplus.co. I think you mentioned you're going to link to that. That's a great Absolutely. And they get a free consultation with you if they mention my name, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. (laughs) I think they get a free consultation anyway, but mention my name. Mention (laughs) what you heard, heard from, heard about this through Miriam and the Inspiration Place podcast. Mm Mm-hmm. And what else do you want to share with us today before we call this episode complete? Well, I guess, man, I'm sure I could plug myself, but I guess since I'm talking to this unique... uh, Yeah, you've been plugged enough. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) I would really like to just say, like, it's really easy to get intimidated. It's really easy to get worn down by this stuff. Don't let that get to you. Keep at it. Look for, you know, solutions. Look for the right people. You know, Uh, I think that's a big thing. And don't, you don't, you don't have to do things just because everybody else is doing it. You know, you don't have to jump on the new hottest platform, but, you know, do your research, feel comfortable and uh, be open to learning the, the stuff because it, it can be intimidating, but it's doable. And artists are one of the best audiences for that because they're really technical. They work with all kinds of dif- different unique tools and things that I don't know anything about. So. Yeah. yeah. So Nate's a really great guy. Like I said, I've worked with him and I send my friends who are looking to do something special with their websites, I send them to him too. And as I said, I'll be sharing links of some of those results in the show notes, which will be at shulmanart.com forward slash 23. And I wouldn't have been able to say that if I didn't have a WordPress site. Thank you, (laughs) Nate, very much. Because Blogger and Shopify don't let you have pretty links like WordPress does. (laughs) Anyway, Nate, thank you so much for joining me. I really enjoyed spending this time with you today. Yeah, no, that was great. That was awesome. Thank you. Thanks so much. I hope that was a good experience for you. (laughs) Yeah, no, you did great. You did great. I was only teasing you when I said you were being boring. I just thought Uh, (laughs) you weren't boring. No, totally. I mean, you know, it's an audience thing. I don't want to... No, but then you can't go, you can't like, you know, it's good to like keep it back and forth. Right. You know, because the contrast is good. I interrupt everybody, by the way. Okay. Yeah, I don't think It's part of my New York Jewish (laughs) ways. Yeah. So... I was at a Jewish wedding this weekend, so... (laughs) Mazel. Thank you. Okay. 
So to listen to Nate's podcast, don't forget, you can check that out. His podcast is Cut Your Learning Curve. And we've included links to his website, his podcast, his book, which I own, in the show notes. Again, that's shulmanart.com forward slash 23 in case you want to learn more about how to work with him. And if you liked this week's episode, you'll definitely want to tune in next week because I'm going to be talking to a copywriter about what words belong on your website. Finally, to wrap this all up, I've got a question for you. Are you subscribed to my podcast? (laughs) Because if you're not, I want to encourage you to do that right away on iTunes at shulmanart.com forward slash iTunes. I'm on every major podcast though, so you can subscribe to all of them. All right, so that's it for now. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you next week, same time, same place. Make it a great one. Bye, everybody. Thank you for listening to the Inspiration Place podcast. Connect with us on Facebook at facebook.com slash shulmanart, on Instagram at shulmanart, and of course, on shulmanart.com. Hey, if you enjoy this podcast, you have to check out the Inspired Insiders Club. It's my monthly membership program where you get weekly inspiration from me. Every week, I share with you techniques that I use in my own art for drawing and painting in both watercolor and mixed media. Plus, you'll get a weekly idea video so that you never run out of ideas for how to make the art your own in your own style. If you're feeling stuck in your art and your goal for 2019 is to unleash greater creativity or to spend more time painting, but you need a little help creating that habit, then the Inspired Insiders Club will help you get there. Come join me over at shulmanart.com. That's shulman with a C shulmanart.com forward slash join. I'd love to have you join me in the Inspired Insiders Club. See you there.